You okay? As long as you don't speak as quick as me, it's going to be fine. Yeah, slow down. <laughs> Afternoon everyone, we'll uh, do as usual, that's tonight, Darren, you alright? We'll leave with Tim, uh, let Johnny jump in and we'll lock him to the floor, thank you. Hi Ian. Hi. So you go to the Liverpool game as huge underdogs, mm. but could Huddersfield be the team that go to Anfield and upset the title race and, and spring a huge surprise, is that possible? Uh, we've got a few surprises there I would say, so for me I'm really excited to go there. It's a that's an incredible stadium for me and an incredible uh, possibility to play for us. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward. How do you approach the game? What does the approach mean? Sorry. Approach? What's your style? What's your plan for it? Ah, okay, so uh, you know, obviously, you know, I think that we won't have the ball so often because they have incredible quality. So we have to be prepared of what we can do when we have the ball and uh, search our solutions for it. And how do you instill the belief in your players? that they can go to Liverpool and surprise everybody and get something from the game? You know, we, sh we shouldn't be stupid and say that we, we, we go there because we, we know about the quality of Liverpool and say that we uh, uh, are the, are the favourite of, um, of, this, of this match. We are not. We're not at all. But also, of course, we have possibilities. And I think that, that there must be an excitement. Uh, the same I have, the same my players will have to go there and to perform in their best possibility. Can you draw from the experience that the players had towards the end of last season when they went to Manchester City and got a draw and then a few days later went to Chelsea and got a draw when nobody really expected it? Yeah, in a way, yes, but the, the situation is different now because we are relegated, and uh, then before it was a different uh, possibility to fight for. Yeah, but still, it's like uh, you know when you when you go to Anfield, there's a great possibility in Premier League, and still we have a Premier League season where we can show our our qualities. David, why well, we know he's very close with with Jurgen Klopp? Mm -hmm. How's your relationship with the Liverpool boss? Do you do you know him well? I have never met him personally, so obviously I know him, but uh, we never spoke personally. And the title race, how do you see it? Liverpool and Manchester City, neck and neck at the, the top of the table. Are you enjoying it like the rest of us? Yeah, definitely. I think both are big clubs and uh, it's an incredible quality in, in both teams. And uh, obviously we, we played already in Man City and I was at the stadium and, and watched them. Yeah, and uh, Liverpool, of course, I also saw them and uh, analysed them. And I think it will be tight, a really tight uh, uh, title race. Have you got a particular team that you would favour? <laughs> For me, it's like in football, the best, the best team, team who performs over the season deserves it, and uh, then it's about the, the teams, uh, who, the team who, who did it. So we will see who, who will win it. How is the title race being viewed back in Germany? Is, is there a lot of support for Jurgen Klopp, or is the support for Pep given his Bayern Munich connection? <laughs> You know, obviously Jürgen is a fantastic manager and he's one of the best managers in the world. So um, obviously he's German, so it's, it's, it's for me obvious that Germans support him. Yeah? And uh, it's for me also like um, um, he's, uh, although, we never, although I never met him, yeah? so he's a great guy. And um, obviously everybody realised what he's doing in Liverpool. With three games to go, what's your message to the players? Is it just to go out and embrace it and enjoy it? Yeah, learn from it, enjoy it, of course, be excited. I think, look at the games which we have left. So it's Liverpool, it's Man United, and then of course it's Southampton at the end of the season. So three big games and yeah, we have to, we have to um, go in with, with excitement and also with, a, with an idea of how, how we want to continue our idea of football. Thank you. Jan, on your team news, how's mm -hmm. Ben Hamer? Still has a problem with Knox, so uh, yeah, still a problem. Yeah. So he won't be involved? No, he won't be involved. No. So that means Jonas Lossel in the side of yeah, the game? Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as him, what about Danny Williams? Mm -hmm. Where's he at the moment? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, Danny has just training with the team, so uh, and uh, yeah, he's, um, he's one of them whose, whose contract is running out, so we have to look what, in which way we um, yeah, deal with it. So do you expect him to leave? That's why he's not necessarily involved as part of your plan? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it yeah. could be, definitely. And Carlin Grant obviously was ill, wasn't he? He played, yeah. but he scored. How is he now? Is he fully recovered? Yeah, definitely. He had a good, uh, a good week, I would say. And uh, um, of course, yeah, after a week with such an illness, it's, it's not easy. But as you see, he scored and he's a threat. So uh, it's good to have him back in the in the team. How much confidence is he playing with at the moment? Do you feel he's stepped up a good mm. few levels, hasn't he? And yet he's really performed. 
I think it's a good confidence, but for me it's important that the team helped him to get this confidence. You know, obviously, as you saw, Chris Lowy, who played as a left winger for the last games, he had two assists already for him, so we also should mention this. And uh, it's a teammate to help him to score, but he's willing to improve as all the other players, so it's good. And How big a role can that have for him next season, do you feel, adapting to life in the Championship? I don't know if, if you can say, but it gives him a, a boost. Yeah. Is that the term? Yeah, it yeah. gives him a boost. And uh, yeah, then it's important for for us to um, to help him to to be prepared for the championship season. And strikers thrive on confidence, don't mm. they? They're all about confidence. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, they need confidence. And I think with the goal, um, he directly showed when he came in that he uh, was helping us in this game. I wanted to ask you about the goalkeeper situation. I know Ben Hamer injured, but in the long term, yeah. how are you viewing your goalkeeper situation, planning for next season? You know, obviously it's um, because uh, I have a good connection with the owners and we, we knew that um, Ben should um, should get the chance uh, this year um, to, to play and I'd, I have to have a look at him because everyone knows Jonas contract is running out of contract and then it's normal also that other teams have a look at our goalkeepers so yeah so they had to uh, have to have a look at um, at Ben and obviously you now he has a knock so uh, that's not a possibility and then Jonas is back in the goal so we are we are both knew that we had an agreement about it and uh, as you can see directly came in the game and was uh, performing well is there any chance that Jonas could still be here next season you never know in football, to be fair. You never know. Yeah, but obviously, it's normal in our situation that other clubs have, have interest and his contract is running out, and then, uh, yeah, it's and, normal. And so. if, if not, would you expect mm. Ben Hamer to be your number one, or would you want to recruit another goalkeeper in the summer? For me, to be fair, this moment is not the situation to talk about this because at the moment he has a knock, he can't play, so I can't see him, mm. and then I will do my decision at the end of the season. So. Matty Daly, he was yeah. involved for you as well. How big a part will he play for you between now and the end of this season? I think he performed quite well, I would say, and uh, as I always say, um, and this I mean honest, and I can repeat maybe several times about it, take care with not putting too much pressure on these young lads. Mm. It's still about, uh, they have to understand that they are part of the first team and you really saw his quality, and then it's of course that they need playing time, because if you're in the first team and don't have the whole time playing time, you need to have it in the EDT team, yeah? and uh, then it's important to, to know when you can bring this, this lads on the pitch. And after his illness and after his injury, I really felt comfortable that this home game was a possibility to to give everyone the, the view of his quality. And I think he proved it. So uh, we, I will have a look in which way I can use him uh, in the last games and last um, remaining games. And in a similar way to Carl and Grant, he can benefit from that for next season, can he? And be a part of your plans in the championship. Yeah, and then for us as a club, it's important to have a, a view and long-term view with what we can do with Matty. So, um, yeah. <coughs> It's important to, to, I don't know what the term is, but it's important that we have a look at their career and to build up the career that they are best possible prepared to play for us. Yeah, so think long term. Don't just yeah. think about now. Think about his yeah. future as well. Not for the football club, but him as a footballer. Yeah, exactly. Because as I said, we need the last uh, games which we had for learning and the, the period after being relegated was exactly about this. So mm. yeah, there was a possibility for him to play at this game and I think he really did quite well. How do you view going to Anfield then for what is an important game for the title race, isn't it? You have your part to play in that battle. I think that the big pressure is on them because, you know, obviously they have a situation where they are fighting in the title race. They won't underestimate us, I'm sure. Yeah? And uh, we go there and should be excited. We go there and uh, should be brave and, uh, uh, and enjoy um, Anfield. We know that Tottenham made a few changes against you, didn't they? And, and do you expect Liverpool to do the same with a big game next week as well in the Champions League? I don't know, to be fair. But at the end, all the players who are on the bench in Liverpool and all the players who haven't played, so they are big, big, big quality. And this we know. And as I said, we don't go there as a, the, the favourite. I don't know how to yeah. say, but... Um, they are, they are the team and we should not be silly as, as to go there and say like, yeah, we, uh, you know, every, everyone knows what this game is about. They are a big team and uh, have big, big quality, but we want to show our uh, possibilities. Can your team relax then because you are such large underdogs, do you feel? Yeah, not relaxed, I would say. We can't go there to be relaxed. We go there to enjoy Anfield, but to show our quality. So uh, this is a game in the Premier League and obviously we are part of the Premier League until the end of the season and we have to show that we want to uh, really compete with them. And on a personal level, yeah. how much are you looking forward to managing at another fantastic stadium in Anfield, such a famous stadium? I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited about it and uh, yeah, as, as you know, I like to challenge myself, so I like to challenge also with my players in this game. <laughs> You've mentioned that you don't know Jurgen Klopp personally, mm -hmm. but as a young German manager, how much do you look up to him and what he's managed to achieve in the game? 
as I said before, he's one of the best managers in the world, I would say. So, uh, of course, you have a look at what he did and uh, the way he, uh, I think, influenced the German way of playing or the, the way of playing in Dortmund. Of course, um, it was for me a big part in my, in my coaching career. And do you feel that, that you're improving as a coach by coming up against someone like him and the other managers that you have already this season? Is the bigger thing which I learned in this in this year, yeah, because playing against each team with such good managers and the structure. So I really learned in this uh, few months now, and this is the knowledge which I can bring into the champion, uh, championship next year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Please. Can I uh, ask you about a couple of other players? Yes. Um, Adama Diakabe. Yeah. How is he? He was uh, now he has had two full weeks, so he's back in training now, and uh, might be possibility that he's in the squad for this for this weekend. So oh, right, he's right. he's better, yeah, definitely, and has uh, no problems. So of course not fully fit like the others who trained the whole time, which is normal then after such a period. But uh, yeah, we had to make sure because he's a type of sprinter, yeah. and in a type of sprinter you have to make sure that the injury doesn't come. So that's why it also took so long. So um, look at Isaac; he also had a long time, and now he's mm, back in the game. I would say. Yeah. Dama was obviously doing well before he got mm -hmm. injured. So is he confident in his own mind that he's ready to, to return? Does he see full beat on the I don't know if I got the question right, but for me it's like when I, I am confident that um, when I bring a player in the squad or in the team that he, he can play without having doubts that there's a problem and then the player is also convinced I would say. So he's. I think he's. Yeah, I think he got it right. I think that he's confident for it. Yeah. How well did you feel he was doing when he got injured? I think quite well. Yeah, so quite well. But it's it's still also for him. He's a young player and he has to learn much for me. And uh, then it's always to look it, if the players are willing to do it. Uh, how about Lauren Butcher? Lauren had the problem with the injury, so I you know. Uh, say, no, it's. I don't have any in my plans concerning this weekend. Um, Philip Billy, how is Philip doing? Yeah, Philip is Philip is training, of course, and uh, yeah, this is uh, I don't um, how do you say uh, I'm um, I don't know what the term is, so but uh, we are, we are in uh, we're, he's in training and he's um, he's progre progressing, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, huh? available, available. Yeah. Is that what I say? Yeah, that's that's yeah the term. So <laughs> he's available yeah. for selection. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, is, is he close to being selected again? Yeah. This is, you know, I, I never tell so much about the squad before because then it's easier for for every manager to look and they say, ah, oh, he will be, might be, so then they know what's about. So, yeah. Have, have you spoken to Philip about the future? Yeah, of, no, I speak to all of my players, which is normal, and uh, they have interests, and we have also interests. So you know, it's about to talk in this period with each player, and I think we have to be aware of what can happen in the summer, which is very important for us. Do you see Philip Billing being here next season? You never, you never know, you never know, and at that time especially not, because it's normal then. At this time, we are relegated, and yeah, there might also be interest from other clubs. So, and okay. um, a couple of the lads, young lads who didn't make it last season. Obviously, Matty Daly came on and played and made his debut. But uh, Dimitri Dehaney and Aaron Rowe are they both in consideration this weekend, or is it a case of? It's maybe too big a thing for these young ones to say. As I said, in such a game, it's, we should not burn these young players, you know. This is a very tough game and then, of course, then you need also experience. But if I trust the player who can be with us, then, of course, I will put him in the squad. But uh, it's about being careful with them, still. Yeah. Especially in such a game, of course. Yeah, they're training with you, you in the first team, right? Yeah, yeah, they're training with me, yeah. And then it's about always looking at them, developing them. And then at the end we make a decision when they where they can uh, where they can play whether an our team or an EDT team. So yeah. it's good for them that they have the possibility to not just to be in our team, you know. So if they train, you you progress. But I think the game time is also important for them. So you know if, if you're then just on the bench or something like this, so it's important for them to have game time to be in the routine, and that's why our connection to the academy is such important. Yeah. yeah. Um, Looking at the game, obviously when you went to Tottenham, yeah. you set up differently. Yeah. Do you match Liverpool up in a 4-3-3 in a three, three, or do you go with a Tottenham style of set -up? I'm quite sure that you know my answer now, <laughs> but of course, you know, it's, uh, each game is different and um, Liverpool plays in another style than Tottenham and in another shape, so we will present our shape on Friday evening. <laughs> 
I know that it's hard for you, but to be fair, I can't tell. <laughs> how, how important is it, bearing in mind the way you conceded the first goal against Watford, how important is possession going you know, to be in this match? I think it's, it's obvious that we won't be the team who has the most of the possession in this game because Liverpool is a big, big quality and we have to find um, when we win the ball possibilities to break through their lines and then this is important for us. Yeah. Do, do you speak to the players about trying to cut out those mistakes which prove so costly? Uh, I th hopefully I got you right. but. For me, it's normal to, to work with the things which are wrong in the game. So to improve the things which you made wrong. And then we go in the video sessions, we go on the training pitch. And yeah, in, uh, it's a tough time at the moment. You know, obviously I said for the players, it's, it was really a hard season. And I understand all of them that their heads are uh, full of uh, all their emotions which they had during the season. But then it's still about the progress in the work which we do. Yeah. yeah. Have you, you mentioned the videos there, have yeah. you watched the home game against Liverpool because it was do you think? close? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I would think so, but, you know, Jonathan Hogg in the post, and mm. penalty turned down, Lawrence mm. Quattro had a good save made. Yeah, it was a good game, Rubio it was a good. really good chance, but yeah. Huddersfield Town pressed them mm. and forced them into mistakes. Mm -hmm. Is that part of your plan for this match as well? <laughs> He knows that, he'll, that I like him, <laughs> because that's why he's trying all the time. <laughs> give me a chance also to, to don't give too many hints to, uh, to Jürgen and uh, Liverpool. Okay. But you, you think there were points that you could build on from that particular match at home? You know, obviously I, I watched each game um, back, which was in the first part of the season, because I wanted to know how we played against them, so and then I thought myself about how we did it. And um, saw so good things and uh, good things which are um, which we already uh, train on and have in our game. They obviously are part of my idea. So we will see in, in which um, idea we go there. You, you, you mentioned last week, obviously. You, I need you, more words to explain him. That is. Mentioned last week. You, yes. You, you, you're obviously working closely with Dean. Um, yeah. the, the owner. I just wondered what, what has Dean said to you about the end of the season and, and how we're going forward? What has Dean said to you about what's happening? I think he made a statement about this on our homepage, so about what the season looked like and uh, the way um, I came in and what was my idea, and uh, I'll stick to my idea. Yeah? So um, even uh, even if it's a real tough situation, we, we have our view and uh, we go for this one. Yeah, he hasn't said anything specifically about the last three games and, and the, the transfer window. Yeah, as I said, we're always in in, uh, in touch and we're always in in uh, um, I'll say it in the in the mind of progressing the team, the the um, the, the club. So these are normal things for us, I would say. Yeah, and we're in touch. And I, to be fair, I like it because it obviously it was one of the reasons why I joined this club. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, when Jurgen Klopp first arrived in the UK, he had such a big impact. Yeah. Did you ever envisage when you were at Dortmund that one day you would be, you know, crossing swords with him in the Premier League? Um, crossing? Yeah. Like playing in the game. Ah, okay. Um, at that stage where I came to Dortmund, it was, um, and I always say this, when I came to Dortmund for the under-23 team, I was working on my task, which was to develop players for the first team, and uh, obviously I achieved my aim and developed myself then, but at that stage where I came in, I didn't think of being part of the Premier League such quick, so um, for me it's a big, big challenge and a big, big honour, so, which means I, I must have done something right in my past. Yeah, 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 proud, proud moment in your career as well, because he's you know, one of the you know, foremost German managers. Definitely. Uh, I would even say um, Big Bigger because he's one of the best managers in the world for me and he proves it. Yeah, yeah what, what makes him so special? Um, I think you know best the way he's uh, developing teams, the way he's uh, um, bringing clubs to their, to their possibility to play for titles. So I think that makes him special. Thanks everyone. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.